Hi everybody, Father Bill Holzinger here, pastor of Holy Trinity Catholic Church. It's just amazing to be able to just say that. Uh, quite a pleasure and a joy uh, and a privilege to be able to come here and be the new shepherd, falling in the shoulders, staying on the shoulders of the giants like Father Dave. Uh, and I hope that I can serve you as effectively as he can, and, and of course in my own style. And one of those styles that may uh, be of uh, at least interest to some of you that is new, uh, not in my life, but for maybe uh, for a pastor, is my incredible desire and love of astronomy. I love astronomy. It's one of my hobbies. And from a little kid, I was just enraptured by how amazing the stars are. And one of those things that happened this weekend, maybe you saw it, it was headline news, was the images from the new James Webb Space Telescope. And it, that's an amazing scope. It's actually floating out beyond the, you know, the moon, pointing into space, and because of that, it has no issues with any kind of um, atmosphere to pierce through, but it's also much larger than Hubble, which has revolutionized astronomy. And uh, we're in a, a renaissance, renaissance of, actually, of astronomy today, and this is one of those examples. So I share this because, for me, it encourages and lifts up my faith. It does not diminish it. Uh, often you hear about the controversy between faith and science. Um, that's bubkis, how about that? Um, there's a great harmony between faith and science, in particular, astronomy. And what I mean by this is that we hear in the scriptures, God has created all the all that is, all the stars are counted, hairs in our head are known, are known all our days are known. But also in the Psalms particularly, we think of Psalm 19, uh, so I think it's verse 2, we hear, that the heavens proclaim the glory of God. And that's important. The heavens do proclaim the glory of God if we are seeing that in the right way. And something to be mindful of is with these new images, the glory that is being shown to us is now even more amazing and astonishing. I am just flabbergasted when I see some of these things. So, for example, here's an image, one of the new images. I'll scooch it over there to my uh, television or my computer monitor there. This is Stefan's Quintet. There's five galaxies here. And with these galaxies, uh, we come to see there's more behind them. Now, for example, this galaxy here, we can actually, with this new resolution, you can actually see some stars in the galaxy, which is awesome. It's amazing. That tells us something about actually how relatively close it is, which is not really close, but relatively close in astronomical terms as far as the other set of, of images here. So, for example, this particular galaxy, as I'm looking here, it's around 39 million light years away. That's awesome. That means the light that we're seeing here took 39 million years to travel to us. Now, that looks like they're all together, doesn't it? But actually, the other galaxies are 10 times further away. 10 times almost. That means they're in the nature of 210 to 340 million light years away. So they really, the four are, are in a group and actually they think they'll collide with each other. But this one, it's on its own. It's, it's in the area, obviously, but it is much further closer to us, yet it's so far away. And within galaxies, like for our galaxy, there's a hundred billion stars in our galaxy, the, drum, the uh, Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy, our neighbor, which you could see if you look with the naked eye, especially with the uh, uh, binoculars, has even more galaxy or has any more stars than our galaxy, the Milky Way. So Andromeda is headed our way and we're uh, in five billion years, we're going to be having a, a get together. Mm -hmm. But what does this do? When I see this, I'm already amazed at how much God has made. I'm amazed at how beautiful it all is and how curious it is that it's so far away that we can't actually reach it. That's, we can't travel there. Um, even Star Trek, things like that, um, don't generally jump from one galaxy to another, okay, minus the Discovery episodes. Uh, but we would not really thought in terms of this uh, in our normal day thinking. So now, this is now in the forefront. It's on the front page of our newspapers, this, or web pages this last week. And this is God sharing his beauty with us. This is how much he loves us. He wants to create and create and create and his love, even though we're small, right? Think of compared to these things. We're a speck of a speck of a speck of a speck. And yet he loves us. He loves us so much that he'd be willing to become like us 
God is infinite and all powerful, and yet He allowed Himself to become in His Son finite in time. And even allowed himself to be limited in some ways. And yet, most importantly, he loves us. And he loves you, loves me, perfectly, con constantly, without condition. And as I look at these things, in fact, as we start to gather and start to look at these things even more, uh, this image is revealed. The abundance of God's love. It's not just these five galaxies, but look at all these other things. These are not dust specks on a lens. These things that have little spikes to them, those are stars. But everything else is a galaxy. So let's just think about this for a minute. If, let's suppose on average, a galaxy has a hundred billion stars to it. And we're guessing there's about 10 to 11, uh, 10 to the power of 11 or 1 billion, or excuse me, 100 billion st uh, galaxies in the universe. Maybe, maybe more. In fact, when we get this stuff going, we start looking at James Webb, we may find there's actually possibly 200 billion galaxies in our universe, or more. The amazing thing that God has done. And he loves you and he loves me. He wants us to see these things so we can see how amazing nature is, how beautiful it is. And the question then becomes, if, who is the uh, owner of these things, right? We often think like, this is my body, this is my life, this is my planet, uh, my universe. See how this starts to kind of fall apart? Actually, this is God's universe. These are God's galaxies. This is God's planet. It's not my life, it's God's life. He has given me this life. I'm a steward of that life. And with that, I'm supposed to be a good steward. How are we good stewards? How are we being hospitable? God is the host. He's the host that's created everything. A lot of things, right? And we are his guest. As guests, what kind of guests are we? I hope we're thankful. This makes me thankful. This encourages me and lifts me up. I hope it does you as well. Think about these things. Think about how much God loves you. And especially if you doubt this, know that his love is almost beyond imagination. Because we can barely imagine this. Think on these things, my friends. And I hope to see you this weekend. Where we're going to talk about what it is to be a good host and a good guest. God bless you all.